Audio Jungle. Fourteen, the French family. Beverly French and her husband lived on a cul-de-sac in a quiet little neighborhood where all of the neighbors were friends. There wasn't much that happened on that block that everyone didn't hear about by the next day. Her husband had carried a box of Christmas lights to the backyard and Beverly was in the front entangling her box of lights when she heard a voice ask if she needed help. The woman found it strange since she didn't hear anyone approach. The girl is the one that spoke, she was about 16 years old and dressed like a housewife in the 50s, she held the hand of a 10-year-old boy. When Beverly didn't respond the girl spoke again stating that she wanted to help, but Beverly was overcome with fear that she knew was inspired by these two kids. Beverly was reminded of the way that a shark looks at their prey when the girl looked at her, and she knew that they had to leave. The girl eventually addressed her by name although she had never introduced herself, Beverly was terrified. Three days later they returned with a third, and Beverly had a standoff as they asked to help her carry her groceries. She felt them zap her energy and their quiet confidence was off-putting but nothing creeped her out like their deeply black eyes. After the children left Beverly fell ill for two straight weeks. 13. Gas Station in Boise, Idaho a man named Kyle claims to have had received a phone call from his friend who was staying out of town with his girlfriend. The pair had stopped at a gas station to get snacks and when they were walking back to their car they noticed two small children next to it. The kids asked the couple for a ride to a bus stop that was very far away, but the friend was put off by the children. They spoke with a confidence that made them seem much older than they actually were. They also had deeply black eyes. Though they were outside of the car the young man felt an urge to open the door that wasn't coming from him. The children finally left and the young man called Kyle as soon as they did because he was so freaked out. After speaking to his friend the young man pulled out of the gas station and was immediately hit by a truck, dying instantly. In the initial inquiry, the truck driver told police that he had swerved to avoid hitting two children on the side of the road. 12. Abilene, Texas Brian Bethel's account of his experience with two little black-eyed children in Texas was first posted on an online forum. It was about 9.30 p.m. when Bethel pulled into the parking lot of the local movie theater to quickly write a check. He was using the light of the theater sign to write the check when he heard a knock on the window of his vehicle. The man remembers feeling unsettled by the two children and he remembered that he was not sure why the sight of two little ones would make him feel that way. One of the little boys told him that they wanted to see a movie but had forgotten their money, they needed help. Bethel saw that the movie had already been playing for an hour and then noticed that the children's eyes were deep black pools. This is when the boy got visibly angry and said you have to let us in. We don't have a gun. That creeped Bethel out enough to peel out of the spot and leave right then. As he looked in his rearview mirror the little boys were nowhere to be seen. 11. The man who went looking for them. Like many who have been terrified by the black-eyed children, Jake refused to be identified when telling his chilling tale. Jake didn't believe that these black-eyed children could really be that scary, so he began doing research and trying to figure out how to find them. He finally decided to post an ad on Craigslist saying that he wanted black-eyed children to come find him at a specific park bench in his neighborhood at 9 p.m. Each night he would go and watch the bench to see if anyone would show up and each night he would be left without one big sighting. The first night after he took the ad down Jake heard three distinct knocks at his front door. The moment that he heard the knocking his skin went ice cold, he had an instinctual, primal fear. He opened the door and the little boy asked to come in, Jake said no and started to close the door. But before he could the little boy said, we missed you at the park tonight and then smiled. This is when Jake realized that they'd been watching him all along. 10. Two Encounters for an Unlucky Individual One man is convinced that the black-eyed children and adults are vampires looking to suck our life force. 
Once while in Albuquerque, New Mexico Ezekiel Finch noticed that in a large crowd of people there were two children that didn't fit in. Finch noticed them because of the intense uneasy feeling that overcame somewhat suddenly. He looked over and saw that the children were in a crowd in the low thirties and everyone's breath was visible, except theirs. They had flat smiles and their flat, black eyes just stared deeply into the crowd. Finch noticed that neither child drew breath in, they both had completely dead dorsoys. Finch had another experience with the woman all alone in the snow at his door wearing only a spaghetti strap shirt or a mini skirt. Finch warns everyone to avoid the plea of these black-eyed children and to remember that they aren't human. 9. Back to Canuck Chase Over the last few decades, the little black-eyed girl of Canuck Chase has become a legend which is why ghost hunters went back to the forest where she lives in October 2015. Haunted finders believe that they have caught the little black-eyed girl of Canuck Chase on camera in a live video feed. The video footage shows a small white outline in a forest as black as night. This is so amazing because the white figure seems to be emanating its own light source, an impossible feat for an earthly human or animal. The team captured this video footage after spending six hours hunting ghosts in the forest. Many children were said to have been buried in an unmarked grave after being murdered. Many in Canuck Chase think that the little girl is the spirit of one of those ill-fated children. To lure people into the fields the little girl giggles and or calls for help. 8. The Last Tale of Canuck Chase When this little girl was spotted for the first time in 30 years many psychics and ghost hunters flocked to Canuck Chase to contact the spirit. Christine Hamlet is a medium and went to Canuck Chase in hopes of snapping a photo of the girl. She used the technique where she took a photo of the water in hopes that the ghost would show themselves in the reflection. What she captured is a photo that could be a spirit kneeling to pray. The psychic also claims that she spoke to spirits in the area and they are looking for help and don't want to move on yet. Hamlet is under the impression that they have a story that they need to tell before they can move on into the light. She also assesses that she could have died in that Victorian workhouse or it is possible that she passed on from an old disease that used to take the lives of children. 7. Triangle Town Center Mall in North Carolina Carrie Kistner was on her way home from Wake Tech Community College by Raleigh, North Carolina when she stopped at the Triangle Town Center Mall. The 20-year-old felt strange about how empty the usually crowded mall was but she didn't question it. On the way back to her car she ran into an older woman and the little boy that sucked her attention like a deep void. He had black hair and pale skin with bags under his eyes with a very thin face. He was arguing with this woman, demanding something, and she was digging in her purse. The girl continued to approach since her car was nearby the pair and she noticed that the closer she got the more uncomfortable the boy seemed to get. As Kistner walked past she looked up to see the boy staring at her. His eyes were enormous black holes, no iris or whites, just all pupil. She was shaken to the core. At the moment they made eye contact he just walked away from the woman, but thankfully did not chase after Carrie. 6. An Unnamed Village in Ain, France Explorer, writer and investigator of the strange David Weatherly wrote about a 1974 encounter with black-eyed children in a small village north of France in the Picardy region. Two men, Elaine and Patrick, were taking a drive to enjoy their day, they left around 3 p.m. Once they arrived in this unnamed village they felt the need to stop and turn around, they stopped at the last house in the village in order to create a new route. The pair saw five strange figures around the home, three in the background on the left in the courtyard, one walking slowly in the front of the home touching the sides of the building with both hands and one in standing smack dab in the middle of the courtyard facing the car. All of the figures were all around four feet tall wearing patched robes that fell to the ground and hair that fell to their waists. Their noses were described as being pressed inwards and their eyes were described as enormous, solid black billiard balls. They gestured to the men to come closer, but they snapped out of their gaze and got out of there. 5. The Boy in Massachusetts Massachusetts man Jim Stills recalls watching a young man shuffle down the road while he smoked his nightly cigarette. 
Stills lives in a neighborhood that he grew up in so there aren't many faces that he doesn't recognize, but this boy wasn't from around there. Each night around 10 p.m. a young boy, around 14-16 years old, would shuffle up and down the road looking for unlocked doors. He would approach each apartment building on the road with his odd gate and try to open the front door. He continued this every night until around 3 a.m. Stills was eventually weird adult and decided to stop going outside during these hours. One night he forgot, stepped outside and saw that the boy was right next to him trying to get into his building. He looked at Jim with his completely black eyes and asked him to buzz him into the building. Stills said that he couldn't let him in and bolted into the side door of the building, locking it behind him, for Northern Louisiana Gas Station. An episode of Darkness Radio in September 2015 spoke about a story regarding black-eyed children at a gas station in northeast Louisiana. It was November 2012 at the only service station for miles at around 3 a.m. when the power went out, leaving the lonely gas station pitch black. He was able to turn on the backup generator which looped the hallway and parking lot. The attendant saw something moving just beyond the scope of light and began squinting to see more clearly, it appeared to be three children riding bikes. As soon as he saw them two of the kids dropped their bicycles and walked right up to the door. The attendant asked why they were out so late at night near the highway wondering if they were okay. He was unsettled but not overly freaked out so when the little girl said that they needed a phone he handed over his cell. The little girl became agitated and asked for the real phone, and pointed to the station, this is when he saw her deeply black eyes. He became overwhelmed and went into the station locking the door in one move. He shouted that the little girl should go home. They stared through the window for a moment before getting on their bikes and riding off into the darkness. 3. The First Black-Eyed Child this is probably the first setting of the Black Eyed Children, a story researched by David Weatherly about a boy named Harold in 1950. Harold was walking home one day when he saw another teenager leaning against the fence as if he was waiting for someone. Harold attempted to make polite conversation but the boy didn't answer. Abruptly the strange boy said I want to go to your house. You're going to walk me up to your house. That was when Harold saw his eyes. They were deep and black, avoid where an iris should be. Harold contemplated running away when the boy seemed to read his mind saying, Now, don't you run away from me. You're going to walk me up to your house. Harold turned and ran as fast as he could all the way home swearing that he heard the growl of a bobcat as he did. When he told his parents what happened his mother claimed they needed to go to a priest and his father grabbed a shotgun to go find this menacing boy, too. Camp Leoin, North Carolina. This account comes from an unnamed U.S. Marine that was stationed at Camp Leoin in 2009. The Marine was living in the infantry barracks off of River Road on the third floor of the building. The space featured open walkways on the outside and rooms on the inside. It was the weekend when this Marine was visited by the black-eyed children in the barracks were pretty empty since most Marines were out partying. He was watching a movie and heard the knock, he answered thinking that it was his drunken roommate forgetting his key again. It was actually two little children with completely black eyes, and the trained marine was immediately freaked out by them. He asked them what they needed and they replied that it was cold outside and they wanted to come in and read. The marine reports being sucked into their pitch black eyes and when he took a look into the hull to see if any other marines were out and the children took another step forward. The Marine felt like they were predators and decided to follow his instincts, shutting the door and locking them outside. He heard soft knocking for the next five minutes, a slight rattle at his window, and then it all stopped. The Marine felt like they were predators and decided to follow his instincts, shutting the door and locking them outside. He heard soft knocking for the next five minutes, a slight rattle at his window, and then it all stopped. One letting the black-eyed children inside. From all of the stories of black-eyed children luring people out to help them or trying to get into their houses this one is the most terrifying. A woman emailed the website weekendear.com telling a story of when two black-eyed children showed up at her door. The woman lives with her husband in rural Vermont in a town where everybody knows each other. 
they woke in the middle of the night during a big snowstorm to pounding on their door. When she peeked outside of the window that concealed what was exactly behind the door she saw footsteps leading to the door from the road but not the tire track in sight but the motion sensor was on. She woke her husband and at that moment the banging on the door began again. Her husband opened the door and saw two children with outdated haircuts that they believed could have been Mennonites whose parents might have crashed in the storm, either way, it was their first instinct to let the children in. The kids were left alone with her husband before asking to go to the bathroom and moments later he got a nosebleed. They are both now suffering from severe health problems and believe the black-eyed children to be the culprit. Subscribe for more.